Hey, welcome to another Nano Studio 2 tutorial. And in this tutorial, what we're gonna look at is automation. So we'll look at how to record and edit automation in the Nano Studio 2 instruments, so the Obsidian synthesizer and the Slate uh, drum pad, as well as uh, track level automations, the mixer faders, the effects, and so forth. All right, so we'll jump right in, and um, I've got a project loaded up here from the uh, Acoustic Pack 1 in-app purchase library. And you'll see here, I'll turn your attention towards what's written here at the bottom of the block level event in the song view. We have some recorded automation already in place here. And if you zoom in close enough, you'll be able to see at least some of them uh, enumerated here. We have effects reverb time, effects mix, dampen, vibrato, and brightness. If we go right into the Obsidian instrument, we'll see these green dots here as indicators as to those recorded events. And when we play it, you'll see the automation in real time playing back. All right, so you can use automation for a bunch of different things just to give you know, more dynamics to your track and make things sound a lot less flat. So when you record an automation event, it gets recorded into this block level data. So we'll double tap that and go into it. And here you'll see our node entry information. To get to the automation data, tap on this, this three point line icon here and see all these colored dots, those represent the recorded automation on the uh, XY pad, the uh, dampen and vibrato as well as brightness. Okay, we'll come back to this in a second just to look at how to edit and manage all that, but going back to the instrument. So all of the automation goes through this macro level performance tab right here. You can automate any of the macro controls and you can set them up to anything. Setting up macro controls is quite easy. I'll, I'll look into that in another tutorial, but assuming you already know how to do that, once you've set up your macro, this one goes to the uh, ENV5 level, which controls the LFO, and that's how we affect our vibrato. In order to record the event data, it's simple. We just go to the part that we want to record, arm the record, and just start tweaking away. You'll see these red icons indicating what can be recorded and just fiddle around with the knob and there you see that green indicator showing the recorded data. We'll go back to that recorded data here to show you how to edit it. So we recorded what was that there? We recorded the room which is I guess like a delay effect. You can edit this just exactly as you'd expect. You can tap and hold on any control point and move it anywhere you'd like. You can select a, a range of control points and you know, delete or add new ones. Use these sliders, maybe for a little finer control. And if you're finding that snapping is getting in the way, just enable or disable the grid accordingly. There's some uses for snapping, but in most cases you'll probably want it disabled. Uh, if you want to disable the automation for whatever reason, just disable it by tapping on that colored dot indicator. You can also just highlight the whole thing and just get rid of it. Let's see, the indicator's gone. You no longer have that automated data recorded. Another thing I should quickly mention before we move ahead is in the record settings here at the record settings tab, you'll see the automation settings here set to either touch or latch, which basically as it says right here, it either stops recording when you release touch or continues recording. You know, this might be uh, useful if you're recording over existing automation data. You can also enable or disable real-time quantize, which will snap to those quantize points on the grid, uh, which obviously you're only going to want to use that if there's a, a rhythmic element and maybe it's difficult to maintain that rhythmic element without quantization. All right, now we're going to turn to Slate and look at how it does this a little bit differently. It's pretty much very similar, but it's a little bit different. Going to my only slate kit loaded here, we'll go to this kit. And actually before we look at that, let's go right into its event data. And when we go to the automation data here, you get a listing of all of the automatable control points. 
So it's all built in, pitch bend, reverb, return, bus one, bus two effects, bus three and bus four. So you can, you know, you don't have to record in real time. You could just lay down your automation data by drawing it. But if you do want to do it in real time, of course, it's pretty much done the exact same way. So if I set this kick to uh, an FX bus, um, I can make use of that automation control just to show you I'm not actually going to do it. See these red indicators show what you can record, the slider or the fader, the cutoff and the resonance. That's about all that's worth saying about Slate. It's just slightly different from Obsidian because you don't have to make macro controls. It's all baked in. Now for mixer or track level automation, it's, it's considerably different. And I already have one set up here. You're not going to see it, and that's one of the main points I want to draw your attention to. Uh, first, I'll show you how to do it, and then I'll show you how to access it, which may not be as obvious on first glance. So looking up here at the top of the mixer, each track has an R and W, which stands for read and write, respectively. So if you want to automate the fader or the pan, or indeed any effects, which I'll show you in a second, you have to first arm it for automation with the write icon. And just like with Obsidian and Slate, you hit record and start manipulating. Here I'm manipulating the pan, and it shows a red indicator, which shows that it's recording. Stop the recording. You can, in most cases, you want to disarm the write so that you don't accidentally overwrite that data later if you change some of the slider settings. Which, by the way, is a good time to mention that this sort of fine detail when doing automation is because that automation is, is being written into the, the block level data, if you make adjustments to the fader later on, if you figure you want a little bit more uh, volume to that track, you should just remember that you may want to revisit that automated data and readjust those levels because you know now they maybe should be a little louder as well. So just something to keep in mind, this is not just for Now Studio 2, this is how you handle automation in just about every application. All right, so now that we have that recorded track level automation data, go back to the song view here. And in order to see that record data, we'll see that same automation icon here in the upper left-hand corner. So tap that, and you'll be able to see all of your track level automation data. So in order to edit it, just tap on this arrow icon. Now you can access that event data just as we saw before. And it'll only show what is available, of course, here on the left-hand side. So if later on you add an effect, so we'll go back to this track, and let's say I want to add, it doesn't really matter, we'll just put a stereo filter on there. If we want to write some automation data for this, hit record, and see with those red icons. Just manipulate that. And there you go, the uh, output gain of the stereo filter is now available as automated event data. And that's about it. That's how you do automation in Nano Studio 2. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.